On the day Sora was released, the biggest tech news wasn't that, but was something out of Google. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition, all the daily AI news you need in around five minutes. There has been this long-standing pattern of Google trying to command a news cycle and OpenAI swooping in and finding a way to front-run them. Yesterday, though, we kind of got the inverse, where theoretically Sora was the biggest announcement, until all of a sudden Google came out with this announcement, which had people's jaws on the floor. Google has announced a new quantum computing chip called Willow. They claim that, quote, Willow performed a standard benchmark computation in under five minutes that would take one of today's fastest supercomputers, 10 septillion, that is 10 to the 25 years, a number that vastly exceeds the age of the universe. Part of the announcement is a claim that they've solved the scaling problem with quantum computing. The chip architecture is capable of reducing errors exponentially as more qubits are added, which is the quantum equivalent of bits. Errors due to interaction with the surrounding environment were the key issue with the technology and stood as an unresolved problem for almost 30 years. Google Quantum AI founder Hartmut Nevin wrote, This historic accomplishment is known in the field as below threshold, being able to drive errors down while scaling up the number of qubits. You must demonstrate being below threshold to show real progress on error correction. And this has been an outstanding challenge since quantum error correction was introduced by Peter Shore in 1995. If that was all completely Greek to you, The TLDR implication is that this is the first time it appears that there's been a viable pathway to quantum computing at scale. Until now, all experiments have been extremely small proof of concepts. Novel and important, but not the first step on the path towards building a useful quantum computer. The big idea with quantum computing is the ability to process certain computations at an unfathomable speed. Traditional computing only moves in a straight line, with the processor testing solutions in sequence before coming up with an answer. Quantum computing allows all solutions to be tested simultaneously. In terms of why we're discussing it here, the technology could be a massive unlock for AI training once it's commercially viable. My colleagues sometimes ask me why I left the burgeoning field of AI to focus on quantum computing. My answer is that both will prove to be the most transformational technologies of our time, but advanced AI will significantly benefit from access to quantum computing. Quantum computing will be indispensable for collecting training data that's inaccessible to classical machines, training and optimizing certain learning architectures, and modeling systems where quantum effects are important. This includes helping us discover new medicines, designing more efficient batteries for electric cars, and accelerating progress in fusion and new energy alternatives. Many of these future game-changing applications won't be feasible on classical computers. They're waiting to be unlocked with quantum computing. Now, it seems incredible, but what is the hype mitigation version of this story? Former NVIDIA leader Boyan Tungu said, I've been holding off saying more about Google's purported quantum computing breakthrough until I read a bit more about it. It turns out, as I had suspected, it was way overhyped. Yes, it's good science, but in terms of any kind of practical applications, we are probably at least a decade away. Even then, it will most likely be specialized areas of application like molecular dynamics. A good rule of thumb is that quantum computers are really good at doing stuff that comes naturally down to quantum mechanics, which is literally all about randomness. Deterministic computations that are relevant for conventional computation are on par with what conventional computers can do. So he kind of just shrugged off the idea that quantum computing is a decade away. And I think that's where a lot of the excitement is coming from. It's about what the future timeline looks like. Educator Paul Cuvert writes, So in less than 24 hours, we got Google unveiling a quantum chip that solves in five minutes what would take the best supercomputers 10 septillion years, OpenAI launching Sora with almost photorealistic AI video quality. The timeline is unreal. Venture investor Neil Kosla writes, Stuff is about to get really weird if AGI and useful quantum computing timelines line up. Add a little robotics to the mix, and there's a growing probability the world 25 years from now looks literally nothing like it does today. Alex Trees points out, best part of this quantum announcement is Google saying, yeah, I don't know, we probably live in a multiverse then. The specific line he pulled from the blog post is, it lends credence to the notion that quantum computation occurs in many parallel universes in line with the idea that we live in a multiverse. Again, a throwaway line. All in all, while it may not be technology for today, it is still pretty cool. Speaking of AGI, Microsoft AI lead Mustafa Suleiman has weighed in on the AGI debate and thinks something very different than Sam Altman. During a Reddit AMA, Suleiman said that the technology is still a decade away, adding, I don't think it can be done on NVIDIA Blackwell GB200s. I do think it is going to be plausible at some point in the next two to five generations. I don't want to say I think it's high probability that it's two years away, but I think within the next five to seven years, since each generation takes 18 to 24 months now. So five generations could be up to 10 years away, depending on how things go. This, of course, flies in the face of Sam Altman's recent comments where he said AGI was coming, quote, sooner than most people in the world think, and it matters much less. Suleiman also dived into the philosophical question of what AGI is, which of course has a pretty big impact on when we think it's going to arrive. He said, To me, AGI is a general purpose learning system that can perform well across all human level training environments. So knowledge work, by the way, that includes physical labor. A lot of my skepticism has to do with the progress and complexity of getting things done in robotics. 
But yes, I can well imagine that we'll have a system that can learn without a great deal of handcrafted prior prompting to perform well in a very wide range of environments. I think that that is not necessarily going to be AGI, nor does that lead to the singularity, but it means that most human knowledge work in the next 5-10 to years could likely be performed by one of the AI systems that we develop. And I think the reason why I shy away from the language around singularity or artificial superintelligence is because I think they're very different things. Of course, the definition of AGI matters a great deal to Microsoft as it would trigger the termination of their deal with OpenAI if the lab manages to achieve it, or at least if OpenAI's board declares that AGI has been achieved. Recent reporting, however, suggests that this clause in the contract is being reconsidered, with OpenAI potentially removing it in order to smooth the process of converting to a for-profit company. Suleiman touched on the reported tensions between the two firms, stating, Every partnership has tension. It's healthy and natural. I mean, they're a completely different business to us. They operate independently and partnerships evolve and they have to adapt to what works at the time. So we'll see how that changes over the next few years. For what it's worth, this is the least denial of any sort of the questions of tensions we've seen, which could be a reflection of the fact that it's gotten more sour, or could also simply reflect the fact that Suleiman was sort of brought in as Microsoft's hedge against whatever the heck is going to go on in OpenAI. Lastly today, XAI have officially announced the release of their cutting-edge image model by the end of the week. Late on Friday night, XAI released their in-house image model named Aurora. The model was only available for a few hours, but that was enough time for users to be amazed by its capabilities. It produced some of the best photorealistic images seen to date from generative AI and seemed to excel at replicating celebrities in particular. Once it was pulled down, users were left wondering when they would get another chance to play with the model, or indeed whether there had been a critical safety issue perhaps associated with the near-complete absence of copyright and deepfake guardrails. The team has now confirmed Aurora's release in select regions with a full rollout within the week. In an announcement blog post they wrote, Grok can now generate high-quality images across several domains, where other image generation models often struggle. It can render precise visual details of real-world entities, text logos, and can create realistic portraits of humans. XAI developer Ethan Knight wrote, Earlier today, we released a new model codenamed Aurora that gives Grok the ability to generate extremely photorealistic images, and in the future even edit them. It's free to use for all of X, try it out, and send us what you're creating. This model was trained entirely in-house with a very small team and we're excited to finally show it off. Elon Musk confirmed that the model was developed internally in around six months, which settles a few questions from Friday night's sneak preview, primarily whether the model was a collaboration with Black Forest Labs, who provides the Flux model that currently drives XAI's image generation capabilities. But the fact that the model was trained so quickly by a small team suggests either that A, we're about to see a massive improvement in image generation across the board, or that the XAI team is simply as cracked as they seem to think they are. In either case, another contender in the image generation space. That, however, is going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition. Next up, the main episode.